Okay, welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Christiane Amanpour in London. The United States and the United Nations are strongly condemning the violence that's erupted in Nigeria. And these are some of the latest images, smoke billowing into the sky amid reports of a prison in Lagos being set ablaze. It comes after security forces open fire at a peaceful demonstration against police brutality on Tuesday. Witnesses and Amnesty International say at least 12 demonstrators were killed in Lagos, which is Africa's most populous city. And across the country, Amnesty says a total of 38 have been killed on Tuesday alone. But the Lagos state governor denies there were any deaths. This brutality in one of Africa's biggest cities comes amid a global uprising for justice and equal rights. And powerful voices from Joe Biden to Beyonce have joined in denouncing this violence. Activist and renowned rapper Folarin Falano, better known by his stage name, Fowles, led one of the first protests two weeks ago, and he's been taking part ever since. And he's joining me now from Lagos. Fowles, welcome to the program. We're, we're, we're coming to you because you've obviously got, you know, the pulse of the people. You've got 7 million Instagram followers, and you have been organizing um, some of these protests and joining in. Can you tell me how this all started? What turned this city into violence? Um, wow, it's, it's really crazy for everyone out here. It's, um, it's a horrible, horrible time. And if this was yesterday, I probably wouldn't have been able to take this call because I was extremely distraught. It was, it, was a, it was a horrible, horrible incident. But um, it started probably about two weeks ago, roughly about two weeks ago. On the 8th of, of October, myself and another artist named Ron Town, we had shared on our um, Twitter and Instagram pages that we were going to do a walk, just a march, a peaceful protest against all forms of police brutality, all forms of um, police misconduct in general. And we, we did that with the hashtag NSARS. Um, the hashtag was already in existence. You know, this is something that was already a big thing on social media, but no one had actually gone ahead to do a physical um, protest. So we decided to take that extra step. Um, so we went out on the 8th. Uh, I think it was a Tuesday. We went out and probably were expecting maybe around about 50, 100 people, but um, <laughs> probably got around about 2,000 people or so that came out on, on that very day. And it was it was huge. You know, we, we did a march to um, to a police station, which has um, some high-ranking officers here in Lagos. And we handed in a petition just saying that the youth um, as a group were very, very unhappy with, you know, the way things, things were going. And we, we were really, really furious about... Um, police brutality, police harassment, police extortion. And, you know, it, 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 enough enough is enough, basically. Everyone was standing up. You know, everyone was lending their voice to this to this particular cause. So um, from that day up until now, back to back to back, it's been um, a different state in, in, in the country because there's 36 states in total. Right. But we, if, apart from the, that very one on that day, we didn't even have to call... For, um, for people to come out in other states. Everyone just trooped out, and, you know, on their own. It's been, it's, it's been crazy. It's been really, really okay, crazy. Files, um, yeah. Let me just interrupt you a bit because I just want to ask you so that our viewers are clear. NSARS is the hashtag and it's the movement. SARS, for everybody to understand, is a special police unit, right? It's the special anti-robbery squad. What is exactly. it about them? And apparently they, they are, they're not in uniform, they're plain clothes, and, and for years you have been protesting against them. What is it that you're actually protesting? What do they do? It's all forms of, it's all forms of violence. It's all forms of um, brutality. And um, they, they, the, the, the offenses that they're supposed to be protecting us against is pretty much what they, is pretty much the offenses they end up committing. Um, the SARS stands for State Anti-Robbery Squad, but they're, they're committing the armed robbery because we hear about numerous cases where they stop young people just because you look fresh, just because you look, you know, you look young and you look like you're making a lot of money. They'll stop you, they'll harass you, they'll go through your phone and um, sometimes they check, they, they, they search for messages from, from your bank, for example, so they can see your uh, bank account balance. And when they do that, they drive you to an ATM, get you to withdraw money, and and you know before before they let you go, if, if they can't get money off you, 
they lock you up. We hear about several, several cases where they locked people up and those people disappeared because they were eventually killed. So it's 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 really, really crazy. If, if you're not as lucky when you encounter them, they could shoot you on the spot. This is all forms of violence. They beat people up. They, you know, they torture people. They murder. They, they, they commit armed robbery. It's everything. It's everything. And there have been so many cases. And um, Let since about 2017, let me ask yeah. you a question because you're right. This has been going on since about 2017. Now, as you know, the state governor in Lagos has denied that there were any deaths, uh, although despite the, despite video, despite Amnesty International and eyewitnesses, the, the Nigerian military, or at least a wing of it, uh, the army has said it's fake news, um, this, you know, and, and they don't believe it. But here's what your president has said, because to an extent he says that he's heard you um, and these these forces should have been off the street, he says. Can we just play a little bit from his speech? The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives. Uh, Fowles, what do you make of that and what, I mean, how much stock do you put in the pledges for police reform? It's, it's infuriating, it's, it's annoying, it's, it's frustrating. And I think that's exactly how everyone's feeling because they've been reforming the police for the longest time, but we've never actually seen actual action. And they said, I was about to say, since 2017, they've been announcing that the, uh, that the SARS unit has been disbanded. They announced in 2017, announced in 2018, announced in 2019, now in 2020. After we started these protests, they announced again, and in the same breath, announced that they were replacing that unit with a new unit called the Special Weapons and Tactics Unit. And it's just, they, they just think we're stupid because you're literally just renaming this unit and expecting us to say, oh, yay, wow, that's great. It's, can, I ask, it's, can I ask you something? It's insensitive. You, I want to ask you what you're demanding, but first I want to ask you, because you alluded to, you know, the stressful situation and the lack of safety. There are a lot of young people who we've reached out to, a lot of people who are very upset and very, you know, like you, but didn't want to appear on camera because they're afraid for their lives. Are you afraid for your own safety? I'm not afraid for my life. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not afraid for my life because um, the, where we are right now, I, I feel like I could easily die by anything else anyway. You know, like there's, there's a sheer, oh, man, I, I don't even know where to start from. We have non-existent healthcare, for example. We have a seriously high level of poverty. There's unemployment. It's, it's, it's in a, it's, we're in a critical state because of how much corruption and just mismanagement of, of funds that we, you know, we continue to see on a daily basis. So if I don't come out to sort of complain about the state of things, I could sit down and, you know, I could, I could have an accident on my way to work or something, and I could die as a result of that because the state of the healthcare is nothing to write home about. We don't even have proper hospitals. Our hospitals aren't well equipped. You know, people have to travel abroad to get proper health care. And every Nigerian, and we keep on saying this, every single Nigerian is one sickness away from passing away. So what, what kind of life am I living anyway? Like, why should I be afraid of dying? I'm going to die anyway. So what's the point? Um, Files, let me ask you, because some of the things you're saying resonate quite strongly with what's happening in the United States. Certainly the racial uprising for justice. Um, and obviously the need for equal health care and, and the like. And you know it's playing very heavily into the presidential election right now. I, I guess I want to ask you whether you feel a sense of, of solidarity coming from the U.S. and other places where politicians, government leaders, and, and you know, singers, artists, rap artists, uh, are basically, you know, saying that, they're coming, they're supporting you. Do you feel a sense of solidarity? Um, in a way, yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's, but I feel, I feel more, 
it's more depressing to to think about what what we're going through because um you know the the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement happened in the United States and um it's more that's a more complicated issue you know with racism and all that stuff but out here it's it's black people doing do, doing the same thing to to their brothers it's it's us it's us on us violence it's it's even more depressing to think about so it's it's a really really terrible state that, that we're in right now and um there was a horrible horrible massacre um that went on on on, on tuesday and as a result everywhere is up in flames there's looting there's shooting this it's a chaotic state right now I, I don't even know where we're going from here and files i mean you know we always have to remind everybody you know you're talking about the biggest city in africa it's nigeria's commercial capital and this is a very rich country it's had a hugely significant economy do you think the government will pay attention and what precisely are you demanding to end this situation now the government has to pay attention. All we're asking for is not to be killed. All we're asking for is not to be ex extorted. All we're asking for is is not to be robbed by the officers that are supposed to be protecting our lives and property. All we're asking for is not to be raped. All we're asking for is not to be beaten up. I don't think it's too much to ask. There's so much so much evil that these officers are perpetrating. Um, you know, under on, under the the, the police. Um, in, in the police uniform, and all we're asking is that this stops. We've continued to, to protest against this for about two weeks straight, and the government has just continued to drag its feet. They're not really giving any real response to, to what we're complaining about, and it's very, very worrying to think about. Files, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for giving us an update, and we understand you know the president well, is talking to the nation. We'll see whether he delivers on any of his promises. Files, thanks for joining we want us. Want to end today. corruption, end killing, and end everything, end everything. We mentioned the United States and the election there. There's twelve.